I love calling people out. There's so many celebrity podcasts, like they talk about nothing. It's such surface level bullshit. Dak Shepard's a great example. You just look like a- What's wrong with you? I told you at nine o'clock. I'm sorry, Wes. I'm sorry. What are some of the most absurd podcasters? I have to tell you, and I know you're friends with- Okay. I, I can't I, believe it. I heard of you when someone I know who knows a buddy of mine sent me a couple of your videos. And okay. I was like, and I watched them and I was like, what is going on? So it was you and a couple other people and you were just, you know, dismantling this uh this particular podcast um and then i started i sifted through you know some of the other videos and you know of course the name of your podcast is you know who are these podcasters which which it's funny because i think in 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 the podcast arena everybody kind of knows like you'll, you're like well this this isn't true this can't be true these views can't be true that can't be true there's a lot of bullshit right so yeah. you start picking it apart but i i never realized like hey you could build a whole podcast on that but um, so that's how I, I came across you. And but so how you were saying you were talking earlier about podcasting. How did that how did that come about? Or you said you have a nightmare scenario or something. Or a nightmare yeah. Thing so happened. we started doing it as a hobby. Uh, a buddy of mine moved across the country to Seattle and uh, we, had, we were communicating quite often and he wanted to start a podcast. So I said, why don't we do this on Saturdays? We'll do this. Who are these podcast show? And kind of a, a tribute to Opie and Anthony he used to do this thing called Jocktober where they would listen to other morning shows, other radio shows and, and make fun of them. So we started doing the same thing, pulling clips and stuff. And, you know, we, we had a couple hundred downloads per episode. No one really knew who we were. It was just a hobby, just for fun, yeah. not making any money or anything. Well, about uh, 80 episodes in, we reviewed this show called The Vanished, hosted by Marissa Jones. Okay. And she's got a pretty big following. True crime show uh, back then, you know, we're, we're going back seven years now. True crime was the thing in podcasting. I right. Mean, it still is, but even more so back then. That's what people associated podcasting with true crime. Right. And she had one of the bigger shows, huge social media following. So we made fun of her show, pulling clips of it, you know, just like we do with every show. Like, but what, what spe anything specific? Like, is it just her reaction or just the fact? She yeah. Was, well, was she being inaccurate or just she, she always blames the police. She never takes the other side of things. She just takes the family side. So we're playing these clips where she's interviewing the mom. And of course, the mom's going to feel a certain way about He's, how law enforcement my works. My son's a good boy. He wouldn't have done this. Oh. That kind of right. thing, precisely. And it's like, well, if you want to get this to be a little more balanced, maybe you should talk to the detective right. who was on the case or you know, other people in that. And she, she didn't do that. So we kind of goofed on that. And look, at this is a lighthearted show. Right. We're not trying to solve any problems in the world. We're just trying to have some fun, have some laughs. So we did that. She was very upset. She reached out to me directly and told me to take this episode down. I said, well, we're not going to take it yeah, down. It's you know, gonna, it's yeah. not going to happen. So then she reached out to did, Apple. Did you, did you, when people do that to me, I'm like, hey, I would love to have you on the show. Why don't you come on the show? I was given that opportunity. I do that now. Right. Back then, we weren't having people on as guests and things like that. So it was, I wasn't interested in that. Right. Nowadays, when people give me a lot of shit, I'm like, come on the show. Let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, and, and. Nine times out of ten, they, they go, never mind. Yeah, yeah. They just want to type on their yeah. computers yeah. at you. Right. So uh, so then she reaches out to Apple, and Apple's not going to take it down. She reaches out to iTunes, which was, you know, where most people were getting podcasts back then. So then she reaches out to my syndicator, Libsyn, at the time. And Libsyn actually called me. Again, I'm not a big podcast. We're right. getting maybe 400 downloads to right. an episode. And Libsyn calls me up and says, hey, I just want to let you know, there's a person who reached out to us who wants us to take your episode down because it uses some of her content and they were so cool. He goes, Carl, we're not going to take it down. Right. You've done nothing wrong here. You know, Marissa obviously didn't know about fair use right. and how that works. She thinks she had a copyright and I was breaking her copyright. So um, it was great. Apple wasn't going to do anything. Libsyn wasn't going to do anything. So then Marissa decided, all right, I need to activate my social media following. And she literally got over 10,000 people to start harassing my company. Now, at the time, I was a partner at a digital marketing firm. I think there's about 15 of us who worked there, but I was one of the partners. If I had been an employee at a company, I'm getting fired. Right. Because the amount of harassment and negative um, comments and things that were flooding in on all social media, my business partner, you know, they found out the name of my company. Then they found out the CEO, who was my partner, and they start reaching out to him through LinkedIn and Twitter, and they're just harassing. Now, when all this was going down, I'm on an airplane to Vegas. My buddy's getting married. 
So I land, you know, that thing you turn on your phone when you, yeah. when you land, you get connected again. <laughs> Holy shit. I, and we're on vacation. I'm with my wife. So I imagine like nothing's going on nah, and whatever. And meanwhile, I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? These people are trying to ruin my life. Right. So basically I have a, a conversation with my partner while I'm out in Vegas. And um, he finally says to me, cause I was really sticking to my guns. I'm like, I'm not taking this episode down. So he finally says to me, uh, it sounds like you should probably just take the episode down. I go, yep, you're right. Right. Cause business first. Yeah. This is my company. My partner's telling me to take it down. Fine. We'll take it down. So then I did a whole heartfelt episode, which is something I've never done before never will again about how all right guys you got me i put out an episode i said i took the episode down you guys win this round but you got to realize what you're doing these people who go out and try to ruin someone's life yeah i mean you don't they don't know me from adam so they don't know if i'm supporting a family young children they don't know what's going on they're just like we're mad at him for our friend marissa who they're not friends with they just listen to her podcast right so let's go ruin this guy's life and it's amazing how people can feel that way and actually execute on something like that as if that's just a normal thing to do. We did We put out a show that no one would have heard. Again, the Streisand effect with this. Right. Because that was our most listened to episode before I took it down. Yeah, she, it, was, it, was, it was a huge boost for you. Right. As opposed to if I, she just ignored it. Right. I still get notes from people who have been listening to the show ever since who found that through that. They're like, yeah, you know, Marissa was bitching about you. And actually, I like your show. So I've been listening to you ever since. So she actually shined a bright light on us, which was nice. Did you ever think about putting the episode? I mean, now you're not. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, that, it's funny you ask that. Great question. Because to me, it'd be like, once I don't need that, I'd be like, oh, now we're doing. Like, yes. now, now you're going to be, guess what? You're going to be the star of, an, of the next few episodes. So it was episode 88. And I remember that because at the time we didn't have a Patreon. I wasn't making any money. We had a merch store. So I said, I'll tell you what, guys, if you want to hear this episode that we had to take down, buy some merch, send me a receipt or a photo of what you bought, and I'll send you a link to the episode so you can listen to it. So we started getting people buying merch because they really wanted to hear the show that they weren't allowed to hear. It was taken off forbidden from the Internet. That's a good idea, by the way. Well, it is because then when we finally started a Patreon a year or two later, um, I put that episode up. I'm like, you've signed up for our Patreon. You get this episode. And our first ever bonus show that we did was revisiting her show, The Vanished Again, and doing another episode on on that because that was behind the paywall. So, right. uh, so yeah, it actually it actually worked out pretty well because it gave me an opportunity to go on some other podcasts and tell the story and just you never get my re- name out there. You never released it publicly though. Again, no. No, it's it's not on the feed. It's not on the main Why feed. Not? Why not? You got to sign up for our Patreon. Oh. Five bucks a month. Patreon.com slash who are these podcasts? And get the episode. I, I need to do that. I interviewed a guy named Johnny Mitchell who, at the very end of his episode, like kind of stopped where I was just about to ex- start explaining something. And he said, Hey, by the way, you know, we're going to stop here. If you want to listen to the rest of the episode, go to the Patreon. And how many, he's got like 26. And I was like, afterwards, we were like, I was like, well, how many how many Patreon guys do you have? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm thinking a thousand, maybe five hundred. He's like, yeah. uh, twenty eight hundred or something. Twenty six hundred. I was like, yeah, twenty six hundred Patreons. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, you're that's doing, about where we're at too. That's yeah. insane. Like, like twenty eight hundred right now, and we also do YouTube members. So if you sign up for a Patreon, Supercast is another one that we have, or our YouTube membership, you get all the bonus content that we do. On ours, all it is is if you pay like and listen, listen to what. <laughs> Like, we need to talk about this, by the way, when he leaves, because and this is my like, you know, <laughs> Colby had nothing to do with this. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, 10 bucks a month. And they get he's like, what do they get with $10? I'm like, they get a thank you. And he goes, well, what do they? He, he, I said, and then 50. And he's like, 50. What do they get? I go, they get advanced access. We'll give it a week or okay. earlier, a couple of days later, they get advanced yep. access. And of course, now I real, you know, obviously, since I've been talking to people about this, I realize, well, Ten dollars a month and getting nothing. People aren't people are signing up, but not in droves, right? You know, because for fifty bucks is what is you know that's where you get behind the paywall for the fifty dollars, and fifty bucks is a lot of money. Yeah, you know. But to me, I was like, yeah, but nobody's gonna join. But there, I see these numbers like five bucks, ten bucks is nothing, and if you're already posting it, I might as well just drop the ten the the fifty dollar guys and say, hey, we're just just don't even pay fifty. You yeah, know? it's funny you say that. Because we have three tiers on our Patreon as well. It's 5, 10, and 25. And uh, basically, I've always pitched it as you're supporting the show. 
Yeah. Thank you for that. This is why I get to do this for a living now, and I really appreciate it. Right. I appreciate all the people who support the show. Thanks for doing that. But we do do bo- two bonus episodes every single month that those people get exclusively. Right. Um, but when I started doing the show with video, because this was always an audio, I- I'm a big radio guy. Right. And I don't have a radio face voice. for TV. So I was like, yeah, I- I'm not looking to do video, but everyone moved to video. Right. So, okay, we started doing video. And I decided, all right, I'm going to let people watch live. Something that, you know, we'd always just pre-record it and then put it out, edit it and everything. I'm like, you can watch it raw, live, the way that we do it. And if you're on our Patreon, and I was going to put it in at the $10 tier to watch live so the people who are at the five would, you know, have to up it. And then I went, fuck it. Everyone who's paying us money can watch it live. Right. So really, there's almost no difference between five, 10 and 25. It's basically just saying, hey, if you have the money and you want to help support us, we really appreciate it. Thank you for that. Yeah, I do we, promise people at the higher tier, if they want to reach out and get like a phone call or a Zoom call or something like that, I'm happy to do that yeah, with those people. But. Yeah, I, I was going to say, to be honest, if you just bug me, I'll pretty much just talk to you. If you just send me two or three emails. Yeah. Or, or oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're, if you're on our Patreon, I, I yeah, I have people who who man the DMs and everything, and we make sure that we're... No, I don't even mean be Patreon. If somebody sends me like two or three emails and keeps like, hey, man, I just want to talk to you for a second. And then they'll hit me three emails. I'll be like... <laughs> Here's my, you know, here, all right, let's, you know, and then I'll talk. I'll, I'll uh, talk well, you should, you should have said that. Not I know, gonna be I sent know. Three they, or four emails to you. Well, this is my fourth email, Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, so, so let's, let's go back to how you got into this beginning with, like, like you, you said radio, but I mean, like, where were you born? What's your childhood? Like, why did you gravitate towards starting the, you know, podcast? Yeah. So uh, I grew up in Western New York and I was really into skateboarding. I was really into music. I play guitar. I'm still in bands to this day. And I was really into comedy. And uh, because I was really into comedy, I really got into um, talk radio. And, uh, you know, Morning Commute, Howard Stern came in in 95 to the Rochester market. So I was still in high school and I'm listening to Howard Stern. And then when I started college, I was commuting. So I was listening to Howard Stern every morning. I was listening to sports talk in the afternoon. I was listening to political talk on AM. So I just really got into uh, talk radio, that format but I mean, specifically. Is that, is that what you were going to college for? Did no. you Did you know like, hey, this is, I, ultimately this is where I want to be? No, this was, a, this was a hobby. This This is what's crazy about it. I went to school for marketing and I got into digital marketing. Like I said, I was a partner at a firm. We did very well. And I was doing very well as my career as a marketer. I never thought I would stop doing that. Right. I was going to take over the company and be sole owner, bring in new partners. I had this whole thing I was going to do. And uh, like I said, the company was doing very well. Well, um, I started doing the podcast just as a hobby. I have, I have a lot of hobbies. I fly drones. I play guitar. I, I do a lot of different things. Um, so we were just doing the podcast weekly. And if people found it cool, you know, it was just a fun thing to do because it was like playing radio at home right. kind of thing. And uh, it was the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, and sent everybody home and everyone's working from home and we're all on Zoom calls and we're no longer going to the office and seeing each other. I got real frustrated with that. Well, what what happened to the marketing firm at that point? Well, we had a lot of clients who stopped advertising altogether. Right. We had a lot of clients that could no longer do business. So it was a tough time. We survived it and we found workarounds and, and things like that. But I got to the point where I was so burned out on it that I said, I'm starting to make a little bit of money on podcasting. Why don't I take a chance on myself? I gave myself five months. I said, it was August of 2020. I said, if I can, by the end of 2020, start making enough money to support myself with podcasting, then I'm going to make the change. Right. And so at first, I was still taking on a lot of freelance digital marketing stuff, and I was doing the podcast, and I was ramping up what we were doing for the podcast. I put more time and effort into it. And uh, I was able to grow it. Uh, to the point where I finally just said, okay, I'm not doing any more digital marketing stuff. I'm, I'm putting that behind me. And now it's just full-time podcasting. What'd your partner say? My partners? Yeah. In the, in the, in the advertising. Yeah. They were, they were not, they were not too <laughs> pleased. They were Sorry. not too pleased. They're, they're both uh, much older than me. Oh, and they were thinking, so we're gonna hand it, we're gonna hand they it were going to sell the company to me. Right. And that was their exit strategy. And we had had many conversations about it. So then when all this went down, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to go. And they spent a couple of months trying to keep me there. We had a lot of meetings and a lot of conversations. But I just finally said, you know what? At, at the time, I'm in my late 30s, early 40s. And I'm like, okay, am I going to spend the next two decades of my life doing this job that is not that rewarding? 
I'm not having fun with at right. all. It pays really well. I'm making good money. I'm living a, a good life when I'm not working, but I was working a ton. Yeah. So I just said, you know what? It'd be more fun to be a professional podcaster if I can make that work. Why not take a chance? And I had enough money saved up at the time that um, I didn't need a weekly paycheck. So I thought, okay, I can take a, a risk here and see what I can do. Yeah, that's what, like we we stuck it out for like two years. And when it got to a point where we saw the number at the end of the month, it was like, okay, if I can double this, mm -hmm. then I can pay all my bills. So now, and we were doing that with one episode. Was it one episode? Yeah, we were doing one episode, but cutting it up into like, Oh yeah, yeah. Two or three Which I do that, but the pro the thing with that was it, it was so it's a two hour episode. You're breaking it up into maybe forty five minutes and an hour, and you know whatever, so yep. a little bit, and you're releasing it three times. Or sometimes I would do an episode just me on something, yep. but it's only thirty minutes. I can only go so long. Thirty forty five minutes. So you're releasing. So you're like, okay, so we're basically putting out two, maybe three hours a week. And if that's bringing in this money much, you know what? If I start if I just double down on this, if yeah. I stop doing everything else, double down on it, we'll know in a, like you said, in a few months, yeah. I'll know, does, does that double what we're bringing in? And sure enough, within a few months, it was like, okay, well, this is double, you know? And I did something that which was StreamYard, which I didn't want to do, you know, the um, uh, remotes. I didn't oh, want right. to do remote. I didn't want to do remote. I wanted people in person. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. way to go. But I was like, listen, if we can just get half as many views it's a lot easier to set up right oh my god talking all, to someone from profit. their living room yeah you know um and take it's so short so yeah so we did that and sure enough like two within two three months it was like okay this like it's, it's funny you say that I, I had the exact same mentality so i i'm keeping my spreadsheet and i'm looking at my different revenue sources and i'm going okay here's the number right now and i was thinking the same way if i double it right that's kind of where i want to be so i i started looking at year over year because I come from a business background. Right. So I started keeping track of year over year and what's my percentage increase and what do I want it to be and where does it need to be? And I was hitting my goals every quarter. Right. Wow, I'm, I'm up 100% from last year. I'm up 110% from last year. I'm up 150% from last so, so you just, you look at it and you go, and then you get to the thing where you're like, does this grow forever? Is this exponential? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, look, if, you, if it was a normal business, yeah. if you went out and you opened up a restaurant and it was doing... 25% better every year. That's a super, incredible. super successful. Yeah, you're, you're franchising right. that. And you're, and you're saying, no, no, it's 100%. And yeah. that's what I was like. I'm always like, every month, we it, incrementally, it just keeps getting larger and larger. And, like, and if you look at the end of the year, you're like, we jump from, we're at 100% from, yep. from the first year to second year to third year. To, it's like, this is like, obviously, I feel like it can't keep going like that, but- it gets to a point where it's paying your bills and you're like, this is like, you'd be an idiot to turn to say, oh, well, no, I'm not going to do this. And I did the same thing you did. So now we were doing a weekly podcast on, on the weekends. Well, now I don't have a day job anymore. I'm like, well, let's do a second show. So now who are these podcasts? We do every Wednesday and every Saturday. Right. And then uh, my buddy, Mike Geary, who formerly a barstool, reached out to me and said, hey, I want to do a show with you. Okay. I start up another podcast. I, I do a show called The Creep Off, the shirt that I'm wearing right now with my buddy Vinny Paulino. What is that one about? Uh, so this is a true crime show oh, okay. for men. Because I feel like all the true crime shows out there- Are for women? Are targeted to women. Well, listen to this. Yeah. The demographic is like 70% female, right? Okay. Yep. On the documentary style, serial killers, right? That's like 70%, 65, 70% women watch those. On my demographic is- 92 to 94 percent are male i believe it right like like i when i, I saw that like, that's not possible but then i never talk about we almost never i maybe you know one out of 40 episodes we talk about there's a murder involved right but it's never we're never specifically really talking about a murder well now probably so one out of 30 one out of, we every once in a while we'll get some yeah, author like, there's not many mystery like trying to solve yeah i don't really about. Yeah, I'm because I'm just not interested in violence. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. interested in some you're more into the psych psychology of it, or well, I was gonna say scams, and and yeah. I'm also very interested in like why did you do this? Like you know what I'm saying? Like I gotta what tell you the to this? episode you did not too long ago with the guy who left Scientology. Oh, Aaron! Yeah, that was awesome. Aaron's listen. Aaron has his own podcast. Yeah, and Aaron does four lives. Um, or what live streams a day. Oh shit. He's doing great. What is he just taking questions from people? Yeah. He just talks to yeah. people. Sometimes he interviews some people. Sometimes he'll yeah. interview people, but that's all he does. I actually just met with a, a guy several, uh, two guys that went to a 
protest for Scientology. I had lunch. One was Clearwater Chad. I, I, I met Clearwater Chad. Sorry, this is a guy who's he's hilarious. He does, um, what do you call it? Uh, parodies. Yeah. He'll, oh, okay. mock, you know, he does parodies. Of, he's done them of me. Okay. He's done them I'll of check that out. characters. And then he looks just like a guy that I wrote a book about called Frank Amadeo. And so anyway, he communicates with me, you know, we email and text and he said, Hey, listen, I'm going to meet Aaron, Aaron Levy Smith, and we're doing a Scientology protest and we're coming into town. I want to have uh, lunch with you. I was like, <laughs> like yeah. I gotta go. Awesome. This guy's hilarious. And the thing is when I saw him, by the way, cause I'm, I'm like five, six, when I saw him, he's like, almost six foot tall he's okay. huge he's a big guy i thought he was like tiny i thought he was like five four five five i, I think it's funny he's almost six feet is huge I think that is funny. huge if you're okay. five seven you're you're practically you're a giant if you're like five, six one listen we got a picture with uh johnny mitchell johnny mitchell's a, a full one foot taller than me he's like six foot six yeah it's ridiculous and it's embarrassing <laughs> um, you don't care about that shit no. do you <laughs> Yes, Do you? A, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, where I'm standing next to him, he is he's towering. He's like like this, and I'm just like, this is ridiculous how tall you are. Um, okay, so uh, uh, well, we were talking, we're talking about, about the the Scientology. No, we were talking about this. We we're talking about the this. creep off. Yeah, but real quick though, on Scientology, I almost want to join Scientology because it's so fascinating. You can make a living off of just exposing them. Oh yeah, that's amazing. I, I just want to be in it for a couple of years and then just do shows talking about how ridiculous it was. I just can't imagine being in a room where they're talking about things and and you have doesn't anybody kind of look around like, did he just say that yeah. Zanu is going to come and save us all? Well, like, that, that's the thing. You're, you're so pot committed. At that point, you've put so much time and money into this thing. You're like, gosh, if this is all fake, then I'm an idiot. Yeah. And I don't want to be an idiot. Yeah. That's how they get you. It's all these all, all these cults work. But yeah, The Creep Off is this uh, true crime show. My buddy Vinny Pauline is a stand-up comic. But he's always fascinated with these off-the-wall true crime stories. And so we do these uh, shows where we highlight the the scum of the week. We call it a scum parade. Right. And we just go through these different stories and, and have a laugh at it, very lighthearted. You know, some of it's horrific, but we have some fun with that. And we also, it's also a competition show. So we pick a different category every week and compete to who can find the biggest creep in that category. So for example, because we were coming out here, we did creepiest person from Tampa. Okay. Was the category for the most recent episode of the creep off. And so Vinny and I both present a creep and then people go on our website and vote and we try to win a round. You got to get to five wins before the other person to win the round. And then the other person has to spin a wheel of consequences. They have to do embarrassing things if they lose. He's got tons of interaction, right? With your your people. That's, yeah. It's like you've got a huge community. Well, yeah. I, I think it's a lot of fun to let them dictate. We've been doing that on Who Are These Podcasts lately, too, where we're starting to do little competitions and then putting up polls on Patreon. People can vote for who brought the worst podcast that week and right. stuff like that. So yeah, I'm trying to in incorporate and, and who listen is, to the feedback. Who was the Tampa guy? Who did I pick for my Tampa guy? Oh, it was um, this horrific story. I, I'll remember his name, but he thought his girlfriend was, was possessed by white demons so Wait, white demons was yeah he black? He black black was couple she? yeah black couple with two kids <laughs> my god he, he thought that she was possessed by a white devil so he shot her with a shotgun she escaped the house but he beat her to death with the shotgun then he took an axe to his nine-year-old special needs daughter then he stabbed his eight-year-old son set both of the kids on fire and left the house the son survived he decided to defend himself in court well, this guy a, always a good move <laughs> always a good move <laughs> the judge is like we highly recommend you get yeah. an attorney <laughs> okay so he actually had to cross-examine his own son who he stabbed so i, fi I found some of that footage oh, and played it on the show but uh needless to say the guy has um three life sentences and will never see the light of day i mean that's a death penalty case that should be a death penalty. it should case, be you know it should be but it's yeah no no uh, opportunity for parole um so yeah, that's the kind of stuff that we uh, we find those stories and we'll pull some news clips or stuff from the trial. There's got to be a ton of stuff from Florida. I Florida man <laughs> comes up quite a bit. I got to be honest with you. You know, it's so funny. People's how long have you been in Florida? My whole life. Your whole life. Except You're from for here? when I was on the run. Yeah, <laughs> fair so enough. I had, I had three out. Uh, I had I had uh, three years away. That's a good reason to leave Florida when people are looking <laughs> yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But people's perception of Florida. 
I, I get it all the time because we bought a house down here uh, last year. And so we have friends come down and visit us all the time. And everyone has these notions of what Florida is. Right. Because of all these crazy stories. And, you know, it's a, sw- it's a swing state. So it's highly politicized. And they're always talking about that kind of shit. It's just another. St- I, I I think it's all the same. I don't see that m- that much of a difference. I mean, I'd, from, from California. I mean, I, we were in L.A. last year. What a shithole. Yeah. Oh, listen. L.A. What? and San Francisco. Even yeah. worse. Yeah. They're, they're shitholes. Yeah. They've let them get so bad. And and so there there are certain places we were hanging out in uh, Koreatown I think, and um, Skid Row is like right there, mm-hmm. and we're just going. I'm, I'm there with a buddy of mine who lives in the area, so we're just like walking around, going to different bars and stuff like that. And I think he was fucking with us because we just walked right into Skid Row. I'm like, oh, this is no longer where I want to be anymore. <laughs> we should probably get the fuck out of here. Um, do you know who? Uh, you know what soft white underbelly is? That sounds familiar. What is it? It's a uh, it's a guy named Mark Leda that uh, runs a podcast, and he like he spent his whole career working for like Adidas, Nike, Apple. Like he's a um a photographer, okay, and and videographer. And so he got to an age, and he just retired, and you know he's got enough money, I can retire. And he went to Skid Row. He rented a a, a large uh, unit and started interviewing homeless people, but the quality of the interviews is phenomenal other than the fact that like i mean the backdrop the the whole setup the lighting the audio it's amazing with the exception of the fact that you've got this person who's you know addicted to god knows what and mm-hmm. has done horrific things has lived this horrific life like they can't you know they're twitching and they're yeah. and and i can't watch them like my wife, she'll watch the whole thing. She'll watch six of them in a row. Like, yeah, it I know sounds fascinating. It, it, it is fascinating. He switched to other people. I actually was interviewed by him, but he's right on Skid Row. So you'll hear people screaming yeah. outside. Hear, you'll hear sirens. You'll hear, and, and it's like, where the fuck are we? And we're like, why would you pick this place? He's like, oh, well, this is this is where the talent is. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's where crazy. the guys are. But I know because I've been down there, and it is. It's like, this is insane. It's insane. They're stumbling around. They're walking around. They're sleeping on the- How they allow that to happen is is crazy to me. But uh, I was watching a video, these YouTubers who have too much money and too much time on their hands, they bought a house off of Amazon. And it's like an 18-minute long video. Right. They bought a house and furnished it all from Amazon. So there's just a billion boxes outside. They're like on a, a tennis court or something. They set up this house. It just builds- you pull it out, push it out. And now you've got this probably 600 square foot house. It's got a working bathroom. It's got a kitchen, a hot plate, and they're bringing in couches and TVs. They're playing video games, all this shit. That's the future right there. Fuck these tents. Right. We got to get all these guys, Amazon houses. That would be sweet. I mean, I don't think that you want it in downtown LA necessarily. Right. Might take up a little bit too much room and fuck with traffic, but you know, a little bit on the outskirts, just give them all Amazon houses. That'd be fun. Oh my God. Be a fun experiment. And then they can all be YouTubers. I'd watch that. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get off this subject. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was going to say Florida. To, I was going to say back to Florida. Florida yeah. to me is uh, people have a perception of Florida to me, which is always like beaches and palm trees and, and um, Miami, like Miami Beach, Miami. But yeah. that's that's part of it. But like 90% of Florida is pickup trucks, rednecks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, South Georgia. Ex- exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, yeah. You've seen the Grady Judd, the um, the sheriff that he does like a, he does a little thing every day now. He puts out a little thing and he'll do these press conferences and someone will say, you know, sheriff, uh, your, your, your deputies, you know, any any reason they fired 180 rounds into the trailer and he'll go he goes yeah they ran out of bu- bu- uh, they ran out of bullets <laughs> yeah right and and they're like <laughs> and and he goes don't get it twisted he said dead can't he goes evil can't be dead enough that's hilarious i mean he's just straight like that's the way it is he's and he's like look we found a dead body in the street he'd been shot several times he has a history of robbing people and burglarizing houses so he, we believe that he burglarized the house. Someone shot him. He got away and he died in the street. We're looking for the homeowner. He's not that they're in trouble because he said, we encourage our citizens to have guns and shoot burglars. Yeah. He said, the problem is 
he he got away and died later like we would have preferred you killed him in the house or on your own property. So we want to give you free lessons on firing your weapon. I mean, just, and you know. Is he going to run for governor, oh this my guy? God, he's great. And you know, you've got all these liberal, the the um, the um media going. Yeah. And they they throw these things out there. Like they'll, they'll try and help him out. And he never takes the help. He's always like. No, let me go ahead and right. give you the meanest, Surely you, you, you don't know what answer. you're saying right now, right? Yeah, exactly. You want to take that back? Exactly. He's he's uh he's vicious, but he's great. He's great. He's also the guy I want showing up. Yeah. Um if someone burglarizes my house. Of course. So, uh but yeah, that's that to me that's that's yeah, Florida. Yeah, Florida is a lot of different things for yeah. sure. Yeah, the, yeah. the north of the state, the south of the state, very very different places. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you go to Palm Palm Beach is vastly different than Tampa, which yeah. is, is vastly different than than Miami. Right. Um or Wesley Chapel. I mean, it's like every other every other uh, um, house has like a pickup truck in it, right? Um, you know, there's there's two sheriff's deputies. This is funny. There's two sheriff's deputies that live on this street. There's like these people are from South America. These people are from they came over um, from Cuba during the uh, Mariel boat lift. Okay. Um, you know, the like everybody in the whole street is Hispanic or black. Mm-hmm. The riffraff on the street is the the white guy and the white chick that live here that just got out of prison. Right. Like, you know, yeah, they're like, like, oh, there goes the neighborhood. Yeah, this is the new America. <laughs> Matthew's I, moving in. I'm, I'm the guy that they're looking at like, I can't believe you live in my neighborhood. I'm like, <laughs> like, how did you think to, I don't want to say go after the podcast, go after a podcaster, but how did you one think of that, of that theme? And two, uh, how do you pick the people? Yeah. You know, and what research do you do? Because you're not going into it. Although, and I'll say my buddy's name on Tommy, you did go. It was a deep dive. Like you. We've we've gone pretty deep with Tommy. Yeah. 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 He's fascinating to yeah. me. <laughs> I find him fascinating. He is fascinating. Like, yeah. That's the nicest way to put it. So the, the reason why we started, like I was saying before, is there used to be this um, segment on the Opie and Anthony show. Are you familiar with Opie and Anthony? No. So that was... Uh, show that was out of Boston and then they got fired from Boston, but picked up in New York city. And then from there they started getting syndicated in the Northeast. And then they got picked up by XM radio to compete against Howard Stern on Sirius. Then the two companies combined Sirius XM. And so you had, they were national with the, uh, the Opie and Anthony show on their channel. So they're known throughout the entire country to whoever was subscribing to Sirius XM back then. And they used to do this bit called Jocktober. Every October, they would do Jocktober, where they would listen to other morning shows. So they would even do ones from my market, like Rochester, New York. They say, okay, today we're listening to 92.5 The B and the morning show from there where Terry Clifford's the host. And uh, one of their interns would just pull these clips and they'd listen to little segments. And morning radio is so hokey and cheesy. It, it is. And they're, they're trying to get, you know, callers to call it. What was your favorite rock band when you were in high school? Give us a call. Let us know what right. you think. <laughs> Death Leopard, that's a great call. Wow, some good hits from those guys. It's just wasting time. Yeah. Just not even a real conversation. So they would play those bits and goof on them. And I was listening to podcasting, uh, you know, pretty early on. And it's having a hard time finding good podcasts. Right. A lot of garbage out there. Because this was before the celebrities got into it. This right. was back when people like you and me were, were doing podcasts. Yeah, I was going to say, it's it's getting competitive. Yes. Now it's very competitive. Yeah. Now now we're up against you know, Theo Vaughn and, and Joe yeah, Rogan. But, yeah. Well, I guess Joe Rogan has always been there. But so um, I had the idea. I, I, my buddy Kevin wanted to, to start a podcast. And I said, well, why don't we do like a Jocktober 4 podcast? Because I didn't see anyone else doing that. Nowadays, it seems like everyone is doing a reaction show on YouTube where they're playing a clip of someone else's show and goofing out of there or something. But at this time, it wasn't really, YouTube wasn't hosting a lot of podcasts. It was very much an audio only medium, just like talk radio. How long ago was this? This is 2016. Okay. So this is my ninth year that we're in right now okay. doing, the, doing the podcast. And so, yeah, so we just started doing uh, Who Are These Podcasts? And my partner ended up quitting the show at episode 59. Why? So we're a little over a year in. Well, a couple of things. I think he got uh, burned out on doing it every week because w- when I do something, I'm going to do it. Right. So if we're going to do this every Saturday at two, it's going to be every Saturday yeah, at two. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. I'll, I'll move things around. Right. I'll, I'll move my schedule around to make sure that we do this thing because it, consistency 
for anyone who's trying to get into podcasting, consistency is so important. Yeah. You know, you, you got to get a schedule and stick to it. Right. And I, I don't think that he wanted to do that. Plus, his style of humor isn't as mean as mine is. Right. So we were goofing on people and he was like holding back and stuff, which was fine. So I ended up because I play in bands. I have a lot of friends and we ball bust all the time. So I just started inviting my other friends onto the show and a rotation of different people co-hosting it with me. And um, so so we continued to do the show. And it wasn't until episode 107, I want to say. So now I'm about two years into it. And uh, Opie from Opie and Anthony started the podcast, Opie Radio, he called it. He had been off. He had, was fired from Sirius. He'd been off for eight months. Everyone's like, what's Opie going to do? He comes back, makes this big splash. Number two rated on iTunes. All these people are checking out what's Opie doing. We do a review of the show. It was Memorial Day weekend. I remember because... That weekend on Sunday, somebody made a video, put it on YouTube of our show. They just took our audio and made a video of it and put it on YouTube. It had 75,000 views by day two. Okay. And this is, again, this is my show is getting 500, 600 downloads an right. episode. And it's just audio. It's not and, even and it's video. just the audio. And lo and behold, this video making fun of Opie is being seen by everyone who used to work with Opie. So now Jim and Sam, who have taken over their their time slot, Jim Norton and Sam Roberts, uh, are talking about it on Monday morning. Anthony Cumia, who has his own show now, is talking about it on his show. So everyone involved in the old Opie and Anthony universe is noticing this and picking up on it. Right. And so I get an invite to go on Anthony Cumia's show not okay. long after that. Nice. And nice. so that was really what took off for us because I was almost ready to quit. Really? Yeah, because it, it, two years, no one's listening. <laughs> it's every weekend. I'm working a lot of hours with my my normal job. I'm, I'm just going, I don't know if I want to keep doing this forever. Like, what, what am I trying to accomplish here? Because right. I, I never got into it to make money. Yeah. It was never the goal. Uh, but then when when that caught on and then now I'm going on other people's shows and and promoting it, um, that was the game changer. So what? So one thing, whenever people talk about starting a show, I always say basically like like with the consistency thing. I said you have to be consistent because I said you have to understand that YouTube's business model is we're trying to get the average guy to start to basically run a network for us. Correct. So to be consistent, to you know, what I'm saying to have quality, like this. What a brilliant strategy, right? Like, but consistency is huge because let's face it, if if your favorite TV show doesn't come on consistently, then you, you find a different yeah, one. You find a different one that does. I'd rather watch something. I know on Tuesday nights, this is what I watch. Well, if they stop putting out friends, well, then I'm going to find something else. Well, two things. First off, you know, what I did this morning before I came over here mm. is I made a thumbnail and I got my video making fun of Dana Carvey up okay. because I, I knew I needed to have the new episode up this morning before I came over here, even though this is much earlier than I'm normally up in the morning. But right. I wanted to make sure I got that done because because it's imp is important. But the other point that I wanted to make is I, I think about like radio shows and TV shows. They always take off around the holidays. I never do because I think there's an opportunity there. If you're putting out new stuff and during Christmas break, right? people are going, ah, no one's putting out new stuff. They're putting out best of packages. What else is out there? The reason why a guy named Drew Lane out of Detroit found our show is because of precisely that. He was looking for something to listen to. He was on a holiday break from his show and he found who are these podcasts. He just started binging it, came back after the new year and started talking us up on his show. Uh, the Drew and Mike show out of Detroit, number one show, they beat Howard Stern in the morning. He's got a huge audience. It's, it's like our biggest market now because Drew Lane found our show and started talking us up. And it was because I was putting out new episodes over Christmas break. Yeah. So consistency, you don't know when it's going to hit, but you have to be consistent. Right. Make yeah. sure it's there. So- how do you find, how do you find oh, these, yes, these guys? Oh, yes, that was the other question you had. Yeah. So, and what research do you do? Yeah, like, yeah you're guys, right. I you got guys, off on a tangent. I apologize. Do you guys figure out, like, do you guys have, like, a strategy session or you just, you just, because, by the way, you know, the, the, this, the biggest creep, the creep. Yeah. Um, you know what that reminds me of? What's that? Um, oh, God. What was it? Uh, My Favorite Murder. Yeah. The, the, I forget their names, the two comedians. Yeah. They were, I don't, I'm sure they're probably it's still a huge. huge. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. probably still, they're hilarious. Hilarious. But yeah, they're making fun of serious situations. Yeah. But, they're making light of it. They're having fun with it. Yeah. But it is hilarious. So there's a couple ways that we find shows to um, review. One of them is people send us in suggestions. 
Right. So in our Discord channel, we have a, a whole uh, channel just devoted to suggestions. People email us. People call into the show. And so as I see the, su- the suggestions come in, they'll usually write why we should go over the show. Maybe they have some knowledge about the background and stuff. So they'll do some of the research for me. I'll take a look at it. Great. That looks good. Once we pick a show and I reach out to whoever's going to guest with me, co-host the show with me. Uh, We'll usually have a little bit of a strategy session to say, hey, I'm going to check out this episode and this episode. Maybe you check out these ones over here because there have been a lot of times where we all listen to or watch the same stuff and then we have the same clips. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a lot of overlap. Like, oh, yeah, I I pulled that too. So it's better to have different things, different perspectives. And as far as the research that goes into it, I... I love researching this stuff. I love going to the, if they have a subreddit dedicated to them, what are the listeners talking about? What are they saying is going on? Um, I'll I'll watch other reaction videos if people have already covered the show. So I try to come in really understanding the show and the hosts. Um, I I make it a point to say right up front, this is a show hosted by so-and-so and so-and-so and 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 putting out the names and explaining what the show is. I'll usually read the description of the show because I really want to understand what they're trying to accomplish. Right. I think it makes it a lot more fun to then point out why they're failing miserably or maybe they're doing a great job. Right. Sometimes that happens too. Um, So I've done that with a guy named Wes Watson. Yes. I, I am shocked that you don't know who Wes Watson is. I, I'm just not in this I, world. I need to I need to find out more you, about you, him. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you have to do an episode mm-hmm. on because you will not run out of material. I love it. I, I, I'm well, th- you. you know what? Since you bring that up real quick, that's the other way that we find shows to review is now we have this roster of recurring shows that as they're putting out new episodes, we're going in and checking out each of these episodes because we really know the background of these shows and our listeners are following it. So it's a lot of fun to go back and, and see that, which tomorrow night we're doing a live show at the uh, central park performing arts center in Largo. And uh, we'll definitely be doing a lot of segments of people. People are familiar with stuttering. John Melendez from the Howard Stern show right. is, is one that we always like to talk about. And which Tommy has had on several times, I think, which yeah. is how I found Tommy. Right. Correct. But yeah, tell me more about this character. Um, In fairness, he doesn't always behave like this. He'll calm down, but pretty much this is what he does. Oh, okay. And he'll supposedly he's making, I don't know, whatever, several million, uh, like a month or something like that. I mean, it's, it's outrageous. The amount of money he's making doing coaching and he, he abuses people. So he, 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 calls you names he yells at you he this is a guy who did but well, this is part of the he has thing. to be doing this on at scale then he's not doing this one-on-one if he's uh, making well millions. He, he also has tons of people signing up for his courses for his okay. it, it's in, like first of all the money he says he's making everybody that's looked into it and does the number says he can't be making that money yeah. that's not can't be making that much money um and then like the vehicles that he has guys will look into it and they're like well these vehicles aren't in his name you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. They're like, so does he have a corporation? Does he have it? And like, I'm not sure how that's working. You know, where he lives, he doesn't own that place. You know, there's all these things like, so there's some faking it till you make it. The other thing is he'll say he went to, you know, I'm sure you don't know anything about prisons, but the prison system, he'll be like, I was in California state prison. I was in a level three yard. Well, I mean, that's where there's, there's just gang activity stabbing each other all the time. They're locked up all the time. These guys are. So, and he talks about how I was a shot caller. And the truth is somebody pulled his records, his prison record. And like you only time you went to California state prison was when you went to the, there are these, these little prisons where they, they sort you like, we're going to send you here because you're violent. Like they kind of look through your stuff and say, you'll be better here, here. So he went there. He was there for like a month or two until they kind of um, designated him. And then he went to Arizona and then he was in two prisons in Arizona. Neither one of them were pins, were, were yeah. pins. They were like a medium and a low. So it's like you, but, and then he says, oh, I did, I did 12 years or he says 10 years. And he actually did like seven and a half, like everything across the board. Isn't it is crazy how people would just lie about shit that anyone can look up. Right, well, keep in mind, almost nobody does, but here's the funny thing. Like it only takes one you, <laughs> one so, person to look it up and post it. So if you're going to say, you know, I did 10 years, like bro, seven and a half is a long time. Yeah. Seven, yeah. Two I'm years listening to long, you. Right, yeah. Right. right. You want to tell yeah. me about your prison experience. Yeah. That, that's enough. You don't have to tell me I was a shot caller. You look at you. Yeah. You were in prison. You're in maniac. I don't care if you never left a medium. Don't, don't lie to me. You know, it's, you know, it reminds me of, it's like going into Iraq. 
You don't have to lie to me and tell me there are weapons of mass destruction. Tell me you want the oil. I'm okay with that. <laughs> right. Yes. Don't lie to me to get your way. Yeah. So th- this is an example of him. And I've had guys that have called him up and paid like 300 bucks to talk to him on the phone. Um, and, and, you know, and usually it's supposed to be like business advice from this guy. <laughs> um, and they'll talk to him. They're like, literally, Matt, he called me a bitch five or six times within 15 minutes, hung up on me twice, and then just kept my $300 and never answered the phone again. So he's, like, a, he's a grifter. Y- yes. yes. <laughs> this, is a, this is a grift, yes. obviously. You just look like a f-ing idiot. And the thing is, is you must not know no real pain. Does he have comments turned on on these videos? Oh, oh God. Look, look, how, look, how are the comments on these? They love him. Simple straight up princess tells me that he's having trouble sleeping. <laughs> Mother man. Your bed is so comfortable. Your life is so good. You let that shit run a train on your soft. <laughs> I remember one time the craziest tornado came through Sayre, Oklahoma, tore the whole place up. And all they do is come running by, get on your beds, ah, they're freaking out. And me and my boy in a cell were smoking a joint when they came rolling up. We're just blazing and the dude's like, hey, get on your beds, you tripping up. I'm like, hey, dude, what, 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 are you, what, what are you tripping about, man? And, and we're just, we don't even care at this point. We're just lit, we're blazed. And they're saying there's a crazy tornado. This tornado tore, tore up the whole he, So this he, guy just tells tall tales. He he does, he does. Um, what's even funnier is that there are guys out there that have recorded their interactions with him. And mm-hmm. I mean, he's just completely abusive. It's it's hilarious. So you're trying to set me up. I, I, I come on here, I tell the story about how there's this Marissa Jones character right. who tried to ruin my life. He will do anything. And, and now you're getting, this guy has got me by, 300 pounds and you're telling me i should go after him and 10 times of meanness so (laughs) so oh we've done a couple videos some of my best videos like what 100 200 views have been just me and my buddy joking like this guy like these guys don't really exist and and then the thing is on my channel guys will come in and, and say look i i've been you know, to a pen. I've been to pen one or pen two in federal and i've been to a state pen here and they're like these does a guy like that like yell and scream every once in a while? Yeah, but mostly that guy's quiet. Like, yeah, your own people will basically tell you to calm down or or check in because your behavior is going to bring heat on us. Yep. You're acting like a maniac. You know, you don't behave like that in prison. And and it's it is it's just a grift. Like he gets these guys that need tough love. And here's the thing: if you listen to his advice, if you sift through all the abuse. He's got decent advice. Like what? What kind of advice? Like, is he you know, out? like, you know, work out, get up early, work out. If you don't like yourself and, you know, you're not getting girls, then then become the person that, that those who women. The f- who the fuck doesn't know this? I, people uh, don't I, know it. People really? Don't, yeah. People don't have fathers and they they re- they need somebody to to kind of push them in the direction. And and, you know, watching a, an Instagram or a TikTok isn't going to is that, you know, it's great. The little saying with the music, that's, that's sweet. But some guys need a guy like Wes Watson to say, get the fuck out of bed. What do you do? They need that. I the, don't. The, the common sense part of it is what blows my mind. Is this guy's going out there and going, yeah, you know what? You got to eat right and right. work out. Like, yeah, no shit. Right. We like, all know that. Make your bed, go to work, yeah. get a job, right. pay your bills. But he doesn't say it like that. Yeah. So if I said that, the guy would be like, yeah, all right, well, I'm going to go sit on the couch and play, you know, play video games for all day and not look for a job. Yeah. Wes Watson screams at him. That guy's like, well, what should I do? You fucking this. You fucking get on fucking Google. Fuck. You know, he just starts. Yeah, they're like, all right, Wes. All right. And then they do it. So some people need that, but he's insane. Yeah. If you watch a couple videos, you guys can I'm all grab a I'm video. I'm almost more interested in his fans. I want to find I'll the people you, who are actually watching this guy to find out how to live their lives. Oh, listen, there, you can go to my uh, comment section on my videos. Half the fans. No, 75% are his fans. No shit, because they're finding it. You soft yep. ass bitch motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus. You know, they're... So they're, yeah, they're vicious. They'll come after me in the you know in the comment section. That's it. But yeah, it, it I, I, I never sought out someone abusing me. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm oh, soft. Oh no, yeah, I'm <laughs> me too. I'm as soft as cotton because I I can't have I can't be around a guy like that. The anxiety. No. I used to, one of the things I said was if I walked into a prison cell like if you know hey Cox you're in you know two you know two fifteen yeah. and I walked into two fifteen and closed the door and I saw a guy like Wes Watson I'd be like this is my worst fucking night yeah. like this guy <laughs> what's going on Sally how you doing what's up you know I'd be like oh shit 
shit. Like, I can't. I need someone quiet that can, is going to let me read. This guy's going to be pacing the fucking cell, wanting to talk all the time. Yeah, that manic energy. God. I can't fucking deal with it. Yeah. But these are broken people who need that in I, their lives. I guess so. I, I mean, I'm not trying to start a fight with uh, a couple million people right now. Well, but I guess you, I am. You have to. You have <laughs> I, to. I'll, I will. You have we'll to. do a deep dive on that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I and, appreciate and, it. And Spencer Cornelius just did a whole well he did what 30 45 minutes on him something like that like what a, he did a video like you know it's kind of a deep dive okay yeah. I'll, I'll check that out That'd then too yeah excellent it's funny too because when i texted him well no i said i sent him an email i said hey man i just watched your video hilarious well whenever he said hey he said i watched your video and that's what gave me the idea oh, to oh, no do shit. this he's like i mean what a character huh and i was like yeah but yeah but he breaks down i think spencer breaks down like He'll brag about making this much money. But the truth is, if you do the numbers, he kind of breaks it down like it's possible based on what he says he's, he's making. He could be making this much money and he breaks it, but not what he says he's doing. I was going to say one more thing. This is you'll love this. I had a guy contact me in the in the uh, in the comment section. No, no, it was Instagram. He works out at the gym that Wes Watson works out and what Wes Watson, Wes Watson trains like 10 people at a time. Okay. And he said, you want to talk about abuse? He said, some guy will come in late and he'll be like, what's wrong with you, motherfucker? I told you fucking nine o'clock. And he'll just, you know, you fucking bitch. He's like, I'm sorry, Wes. I'm sorry. I, I, you don't understand. He's like, hey, there was traffic. He's like, you account for that shit, motherfucker. It's LA. You know, I mean, just, he's like, he yells at these guys. Not he's surprised the gym's okay with right? that. Oh, I'm sure it's uh, one of those gyms where guys are screaming and hopping. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not. It's not LA fitness. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, boo. He said, this guy is insane the way he behaves and talks to these people. So anyway, you yeah. were saying, sorry. I, I, no, I, I, I lost my train of thought, but I, uh, <laughs> you no, no, this, this is what you I was going to tell look. you. This is what I was going to tell you. In my experience, because I, I look at these um, podcasters who brag and are braggadocious all the time. And in my experience, guys who talk about how much money they make don't make that much money. Right. Guys who talk about getting laid a lot don't get laid a lot. Like the people who are actually living the lives and doing these things are kind of quiet about it. Yeah. Pretty humble about it. They don't need to prove anything to you. Oh, listen, I've I've known many, many multimillionaires. Yeah. They drive a ten, Me too. They drive 10-year-old Volvos. Yeah. They live in a nice house, you know, but not something that if things went bad, they couldn't make the mortgage payment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like They don't normal, flaunt it. They never flaunt it. They're yeah. not wearing ridiculous clothes and wa they're not watching or wearing big bling bling washes with all right. these diamonds. It, that, it's the, it's the, the people who are faking it who do that shit. Right. Because they want you to think that they have that yes. going on. And when you actually have that going on and you've earned it, that's a big part of it too. When you've earned it for earned yourself. It. Yeah. Cause that's maybe, when you're a little more humble about it. You don't feel like you need to go out bragging everyone. Yeah. There may be like new money who some guy who accidentally invented something that he thought might do okay. And next thing you know, it's bringing in $20 million a month. He might go out and you know, spend stupid. Do you money. know who John Sarasani is? No. Sounds okay. familiar. Why? So he, he's all over Instagram. He's got a, a podcast as well, but uh, he's one of these guys who was in B2B sales making decent money, probably 300,000 a year or something. And then he's like, fuck this. So he started up his own company, sold it. Now he's got a few million dollars. It's exactly what you're talking about. Every video on Instagram, bragging about his house, bragging about his car. He, he buys friends. He was right. hanging out with uh, Joe Rogan the other day because it was Tom Segura's launch party for their vodka. Right. And he just wanted to get photos with the guys and be like, hey, look at me. I'm hanging out with Tom Segura. And it's... It's one of these guys who just needs you to validate him so badly. Right. It's like, dude, yeah. if you're doing that well, then why do you care what I think? I, exactly. I, 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 I can't imagine why you would care what anybody thinks. Yeah, like, it's bizarre. I, I only have one or two people in my life that I, I'm semi-concerned with, they think. Right. You know? As you should. Yeah, family. Yeah, yeah family. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, eh, I want them to think well of me, but it's not, I'm not going to lose sleep if they don't. You know? <laughs> you're not right. if it's for the right reasons. Like, um, So what are some of your favorite that you've, uh, videos that you've or podcasters what are some of the most absurd podcasters okay well i have to tell you and i know you're friends with tommy okay i, I can't I, believe it's gonna i be think tommy. he i think he rebranded tommy t show or something now yes. it's called yes. which is a good move because msc asked me no one understood why it was called that yeah. They didn't. I think he was trying to do something with his companies. He had an engineering firm, At one and time, yes. uh, I don't even know all these different MSCS different things that he was doing. So I think that he's he's smart to to make that move. But we were fascinated by him because Stuttering John was bragging. You know, so we follow Stuttering John pretty closely. 
And John was bragging about his buddy Tommy in Florida, flying him out, putting him up in a hotel and paying him money to be on the show. And I went, huh, all right, well, this guy must have a lot going on. So we watch his show and 500,000 views on every episode. Yeah, within a few I've never, days. I've never heard of this guy. How is this possible? I'm, I pay attention to podcasts. You know, yeah. I, I listen to a lot of shows. I know it's popular out there. And then we're looking at the comments and it doesn't look like English is the first language. For these comments, very generic. Another another good one, Tommy. This was a great episode again. You're like, who writes comments like this? This is not what people, people don't feel compelled to write. This was pretty good. Yeah. Good go, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, what's the point of that? Doesn't make any sense. So, <clears throat> so we were fascinated just from the, uh, the Stuttering John stuff. And then we started digging deeper into some of his other shows because he was getting some pretty big names. Yeah. He's gotten some pretty big names on there. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, and what's what's funny is some of those episodes, like basically, like he had Patrick Bet David on there. Patrick Bet David carries the whole. That luckily he talks ninety five percent of the time and carries the whole. Oh episode. yeah. Oh, when he when he has smart people on, he yeah. doesn't talk. I don't like those episodes. Right. Well, I like when he's talking. Those are the ones that when when he starts going off on some theory or aliens or shit like that, then I'm tuned in. I want to see what he's going to say about that. That's my favorite. You, you, when we talked, you were like, I, I don't, is his first language English? Dude, I, I'm it, convinced. It, it, I'm convinced. <laughs> There's no way his first language is English because he doesn't get any phrases correct. Yeah. He, he never knows the word that he's looking for, which is fine. I don't speak more than one language. If that's his second language, I'm impressed. That's pretty good. It's, it's. It's not. His only language is English. <laughs> if you, so if I showed you the text. <laughs> it's that so he sends, crazy. Because you can imagine what, you know, when someone talks, you kind of can feel out like what they're saying. But when he texts you and he's not in front of you. Oh, right. Then it's like. And no it's, idea. It's, he'll take what should be one sentence and it's three texts. So it's when he's one of those guys that bombards you. He's like, bring, 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 bring. So you're reading three different texts to try and figure it. And then you're still like. You know, I think this is what he's saying. Yeah. And then you have to figure it out. And then, but while you're trying to read that, it's shifting up because he's, a bring, bring, <laughs> he's bring, still hitting bring, it. Yeah. Like, and then by then, there's no way you can respond to the first two things. Right. I have no idea. And now, yeah. now I'm completely lost at the whole, the, the 18 texts you've sent me. I have no idea what you're trying to say. I don't know about about. you. I get overwhelmed by that. And so I, I go, I, I, I go, I'll respond another time. And then I never do. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just goes oh, I'll, I'll yell at him. I'll, I'll yell at people. <laughs> like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Put your, here's how you do it. Think about what you want to say, put your <laughs> thoughts together, formulate the, the sentence structure, yeah. then write it out, read it to yourself. Like, yes, proofread it. I... Wait for me to respond. Punctuate. <laughs> Punctuate. would be nice to know what the sentence adds. Yeah. That's helpful. Appreciate that. Um, so we were blown away by this guy who obviously is trying to be Joe Rogan. He's trying to have those types of conversations with his guests, long form interviews in a nice studio. He's got his Jamie. Hey, pull this up on the screen over here. He's doing all the Joe Rogan yeah. stuff. And that was one of the things I picked up on right away. And we went, well, wait a second. This can't be real. Right. <laughs> These can't be real views. So then I'm looking at his MSCS engineering website, which I don't think is up anymore. But yeah, probably because of you. <laughs> none of it's <laughs> grammatically correct. Right. And it's all about like all these services they have. And lo and behold, they do everything you could possibly do. Yeah. It's crazy. And so you're like, well, this can't be a real company. It's all generic photos and things, all stock footage. And all the wording is incorrect. I'm like, I've been in this world of you know, B2B marketing. Right. I used to live in that space. I'm going, no one's hiring this company right. based on this website. This can't, this can't be real either. So then I'm going, is everything just a front? Is, is, every, like, is he the fake it till you make it guy? Or is all of this just a front? So we've been fascinated by him. I'm sure you have some insight into this. But. I have some insight. You know, it's like he he is he is a friend of mine. As much as you can, you know, any, anybody can be a friend of of Tommy's. You know, it's it's he's sporadic and he's all over the place and he's uh he's like he's uh he's super hyper. Um, you know, he's from Philadelphia originally. And uh, he ended up in West Palm through mysterious circumstances, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, but listen, but has always been treated me very well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's hard. It's like you, you ever have that friend who's a knucklehead and you see them do knucklehead things. But they have a heart of gold. They have know. a heart of gold. And he does have a heart of gold. Yeah. You know, he's just it's like, what are you doing? Like, this is not working. What you're doing, like. The whole thing, the views, the 
the subs. It's like, stop it, bro. Like, what? What's well, happening? The, the advertising. The advertise. The Spotify exclusive. He, he was advertising Monster Energy or or something. Right. You don't and, have Monster Energy, and Monster Energy is not advertising. Well, he was advertising flavors that no longer exist. No. Because we, we're going to the website, he's going, yeah, just go to this website, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, the website's updated. Your ad is not. Right. Th- this is not a, a thing right here. But yeah, so um, we, we kind of saw through a lot of the bullshit on that right. one. But to give you some other examples, we don't have to talk about uh, Tavi. Right. <laughs> uh, to give you some other examples, sometimes we find podcasts where it's just weirdos. Like we did an adult diaper show not too long ago. You get these these people and they find each other because of the internet. Yeah. I don't think this used to exist that much. I think it'd be harder to find people who in their 30s like peeing into a diaper back in the 80s. I don't think that happened as mm. much, right? Yeah. How would, you, they, they, how would they ever connect? How would you connect? And also, there'd be like some shame around that. So if you were into that, you wouldn't tell a lot of people. Right. Keep it to yourself. But when you have 160 or 100, 200 people in the comments going, oh, bro, have you ever tried this? That's yeah. amazing. Now there's a community around it. And now all your best friends like peeing in a diaper. And so now they're doing podcasts and they're just out in the open and acting like, yeah, isn't this great? We're all peeing in our diapers together. We're going to have a party together. So those types of shows are fun. Furries. What what are they? What are they? Furry? What? (laughs) You know know what furries are, right? Furries is somebody who thinks they're like a cat or something. Yeah, they they wear the elaborate costume. They cost a lot of money and they go to these conventions. And it's basically... Ugly people fucking each other when you boil it all down. Now, furries would argue with me on that. But basically, that's what the whole game plan is. So do do um, do channels like that have like subscribers and do they get views or are they like it's got 400 views and it's got they've got 800 subscribers? Yeah, they're not doing huge numbers. None of these real like weirdo niche things are doing huge numbers, but. It's crazy because their community is very connected. Right. We were talking before about how on my shows, we put polls out. We get a lot of audience participation. Like these shows do a great job with that because you have all these people who, oh my gosh, I found my people. Right. This is, this is wow. These, I belong here. I this feel is where I belong. I'm comfortable with these people. And again, the internet, I, I mean, if I make my living off the internet, I right. always have. But I don't know if it's a good thing. Right. <laughs> I, I could argue with you that the internet's very bad for society. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say it's 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 like TikTok. Like I'm I'm getting a check, but mm-hmm. I feel like there's some bad stuff going on. Maybe you know it's like, rotting it's, people's yeah, brains. It's really, it's very bad for you. The addictiveness of it. You know, social media in general. I do a show called Who Are These Socials, and uh, <laughs> having shows. Yeah. So that's on Thursdays at six o'clock on our channel. And uh, so who are these socials? We go through TikTok and we go, that's how we found John Sarasani on Instagram reels. And we're looking at Twitter and everything else. And it's crazy to me that we know social media is bad for you. There's been countless studies that people who spend more time on social media are more depressed, anxious, suicide rates are going up amongst young people, all these things that if this was tobacco, right, they would be like, well, okay, we, children can't use this product. Right. It's bad for them. And 18 is not high enough. Now it's 21. Yeah. You know, and, and every politician is going, yeah, look at what I just did. I saved our kids by doing this thing for whatever fucking reason. We all know social media is terrible for people. And yet every single kid has TikTok and Instagram and Snapchat. And parents are just like, well, yeah, I mean, all their friends have it. So, well, all their friends are doing math. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Right. Yeah, I don't want my kid to be the only one not doing yeah. math. It's crazy to me. I, I, my wife and I walked around the block the other day and at a different time than we normally do. And there was, there were about seven or eight kids out kind of like shooting, like playing back. And I mean like young kids, like 10, 12 years old. And I was like, and I remember, you know, that sparked a whole conversation for, cause it was almost like when I saw them, I thought, shouldn't they be inside playing video games? Yeah. You don't see it anymore. Right. And so we were, I was like, you know, I said, wow. So, you know, what? it was starting to get dark. And I was like, you know, what that reminds me of my, I, my literally, my mother would come out at like 5 30 or like six or seven o'clock and scream you know dinner yeah and i would be two blocks away and hear her and come back or we would be out playing and she would say come back when the lights come on yep and street lights come on right yep. when the street lights like that doesn't happen anymore and so when i saw these kids i, I we, we had this whole conversation and and my wife was like she's like that it's, it's like it's amazing to see kids out she was because think about it everybody in this neighborhood has kids Almost yeah. everybody. You never you see them. Never see the kids. Never. Well, you know, that's another thing, too. 
I don't think that society is more dangerous than it used to be. Maybe in the last couple of years it has been, but uh, society isn't more dangerous. But for some reason, because of the true crime phenomenon, right? All these TV shows, all these A and things, and yeah, and the, the podcast and everything else, you hear about all these abductions and all this crazy shit that happens. And because of that, your brain plays tricks on you. You don't understand how statistics works. So kids are not allowed to just go and hang out. And when I was younger, I was talking about how I grew up skateboarding. Me and my friends would get together in the morning. We'd go out. We would take the bus into the city. We would just go out to all these different places and go skateboarding all day long. No phone. No one knew where we were. No phone. Nothing. No phones. No be, nothing. Be no pay, by six no pager. And yeah, we just had to be home at a certain time and then we would be. Or we'd call. Be like, oh, I'm staying over at Nick's house. We're going we're gonna to skate. All yeah. night, you know, whatever. Do you, do you know where um, Bush, you know, you've heard of Bush Gardens? Yeah, of course. So there's Bush Gardens and then there's um, uh, Adventure Island, yep. which I lived, we probably lived four miles, five miles from there on the Hillsborough River uh, in Temple Terrace. My mother for summer bought me a, season, a pass, like a summer pass, and Amazing. I could go to either one of them. I'm telling you right now, I rode my bike almost every single day all the way to... Uh, to Adventure Island or Bush Gardens, hung out there all day, came back at by had to be back by like six o'clock, and that was it. She didn't know where I was. Yeah, I'm stumbling out of the house at nine thirty or ten in the morning. I'm gone the whole summer, and now you have and I, not to get off on all of this, but doesn't that seem way more healthy? Now you have these kids who are going into job interviews with their parent there with them. Oh, yeah. Like they they need an adult at all times. Like no, you're the you're, you're the not adult talking now. About a child, you're talking about a 22 or 23 <laughs> yeah, year old. Who right, lives they're out of college, home. right? And they're bringing their parents with them to a job interview. So yeah, I, I don't think we're going in the right direction on these things. It's crazy. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. So okay. So it, so it's just those are the two episodes. Sorry, I'm just going back to any anything. We, yeah, what you got on the horizon. What do we have on the horizon? Um, you know, one of the bigger podcasts out there is Fly on the Wall. And it's David Spade and Dana Carvey. David, oh yeah. And they, I, see, I didn't know it was named. Yeah, it's yeah. called Fly on the Wall. It's, it's, a, it's a real big show. Yeah, they're funny. And David Spade's great. You're right. I really like him a lot. And they talk about SNL and they bring on people who used to be on SNL or maybe hosted and stuff like that. And they just started a spinoff show called Superfly. We okay. just reviewed it this past week. And uh, Dana Carvey was very funny on Saturday Night Live 35 years ago, 40 years ago, whatever it was. Right. He's lost it. He has no idea how to improv and he gets stuck in these impressions that he can't get himself out of. He'll just start doing George Bush out of nowhere and just and just start doing the wouldn't be prudent, you know, just start doing his old, you know, church lady and shit. And you're like, Dana, are you with? Hey, right. hey. Come back to us here, Dana. What's going on? Um, so I'm fascinated by that. I'm going to be doing a lot more research into that. I, I, I told you about my buddy Drew Lane uh, out of Detroit. So Drew, radio guy his entire life, uh, went market to market. You know how these radio guys go. They just keep upgrading bigger and bigger markets. And he finally found his home in Detroit and was on for decades, morning radio, doing very well. He switched over to podcasting. Because, you know, these radio stations are all downsizing and people making the big paychecks. Right. Can't have those people on the staff anymore. Now we got to get the morning show that's also syndicated from seven other markets cheaper to get them on. So he started doing a podcast. And the reason why he latched on to us, what he liked about our show is I called out these celebrities who think it's easy to just do a radio show. Like, right. I'm already a celebrity. I'll just do a radio show. I was like, no, there's a skill to this. Yeah, yeah. It's not just because I'm a personality, because I've been in movies, because I have a music career. Now I can interview my friends and it'll be interesting and compelling. There's so many celebrity podcasts, like Dak Shepard's a great example, where they just have their friends come over to their house and they talk about nothing. It's such surface level bullshit. If they actually talked about their real lives, it might be interesting, but they don't. They have a publicist. They, anyone who has a publicist is not a good interview. Right. Right? Because they're getting coached on what they can say and what they can't say. So I like to point out, we love when celebrities get podcasts. Whenever there's a new celebrity getting into podcasting, I love to look at that. Free material. It's it's uh, it's Because everyone knows who they are of, already. Right. And you, know, you were talking about how you found me. And a lot of people find our show based on the shows that we're reviewing. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, it's a great way to, to con kind of con 
conscript their subscriber base. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? Exactly. So uh, if, if I'm reviewing Joe Rogan, now Joe Rogan Experience is the title of my podcast episode. Right. A lot yeah, of people yeah. are looking for that. Yeah. You know, so you're going to get a lot of eyeballs on things like that. So I find it, 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 it works both ways. You know, you find a celebrity podcast, you know, Brendan Schaub's a great example. Yeah. Brendan Schaub became, you know, MMA guy, uh, decided to go into comedy, terrible at it. Right. Has all these podcasts, terrible at it. There's giant communities online that just make fun of him. He had a, he sued a guy, a YouTuber, just lost the lawsuit. Right. For defamation or something. And um, so it's like one of these guys that everyone's focusing on. And, you know, you, you do those types of shows. People find it because they're looking for that content as well. And it's easy to goof on these people because they have massive egos. They think that whatever they say is interesting because people have told them that right. their entire lives. Yeah, you sur you surround yourself with a yes man. You're mm -hmm. you're gonna start doing some pretty stupid stuff. Um, yeah, I was gonna say most of the comedian ones are funny, you know, because co comedians to me are super sharp, so some, they can kind of go back and forth. You know, Tim Dillon's one of my favorite podcasts. Yeah, yeah, I think he's, I love Tim Dillon. Yeah, he's pretty funny. He's great, and I subscribe to his Patreon, and I go see him live whenever I can. Uh, he's fantastic. He's one of these guys who gets it. He can just off the top of his head, just come up with these bizarre scenarios. Like, how do you even think like that? This yeah. is fantastic. Most comedians aren't like that. And uh, I've noticed, like, we did a show a couple times. Rich Voss is married to Bonnie McFarlane. And they had a show, it was actually on Sirius years ago, called My Wife Hates Me. Okay. So they're a married couple. And they just sit down at a table in their den. And they, they just bullshit and bicker like a married couple. Right. For an hour a week. Okay. It's no. terrible. Yeah, I was going to say. No. And I like Rich Voss and I like yeah. Bonnie. And they're just putting no effort into it. They're just doing a low effort podcast. But they think because they have the experience, they've been on all these radio shows, They people know their names, they can just go on and phone it in. I love calling people out right. who phone it in because they think they can just get by on their well, this is notoriety. The, the whole, like even just having a discussion with you is way harder than interviewing some a normal person, right? Because a normal n most of my episodes go like where... I follow a basic kind of a format. Mm -hmm. And so for an hour and a half or so, all I have to do is go, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. What'd your parents think? <laughs> what did the, you know, when you got arrested, did they, they tell you to come down or did they pull their guns? Oh, they pulled my guns. You know, they, Oh, what's your lawyer say? You bring in people I, who have a story to tell. Yeah, they have a story. You, and the most I have to do is coax them. And I already know the story because I've been through it and I've yeah. interviewed a hundred guys that have been through something. It doesn't matter whether they're selling, you know, um uh cocaine or or their or it's a ponzi scheme you still use it they all follow the same thing you were a normal guy and then this opportunity came and most people would have said not interested and you said sounds like a plan and then you it slowly went built up things happen mm -hmm. you know you either got around those things you got arrested right away or you continue to get over um obstacles that came uh, you know in your path and your crime was much longer and then, you know, maybe there were car chases, there was an investigation, you got arrested, your lawyer told you this, maybe you got bombed, maybe you didn't, you eventually pled guilty or you went to trial, you went to prison, what was that like? Now, what are you doing now? Like, that's it. It's like, it's like the formula changes very subtly. Right. That's easy. But when you're having a conversation with you, you know, like you and I are having, like, I have to really pay attention and I have to try and come up with something witty and I'm not fast enough to come. So that's why every once in a while you'll stop and I'm just like. So then what happened? Well, I, I appreciate what you having you working I on? want to say I appreciate you having <laughs> me on. I really do because I know that I'm very different as a guest on this show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, I love that. And one of the things that I've been trying to do since I've become a professional podcaster is we do a lot of live shows. So we've done Chicago, Nashville, Philly, Detroit a couple of times, my hometown, Rochester. We're in uh, Largo near Tampa uh, tomorrow night, this weekend. I got Las Vegas coming up later in the year and the live shows are and what is the how does that work like do you have an auditorium or i don't understand yeah we're in a th theaters really yeah so i bring a pretty big crew with me okay so it'll it'll be we have we have a, a rotating cast on watp we have some celebrities that come on from time to time um but basically it's me and my friends okay and uh, so we bring, we all come down, we get an Airbnb, we hang out for the weekend. It's a lot of fun. Like tonight, I'm going to go to Hulk Hogan's place and all the people who are traveling in from out of town to come to the show are going to come by and meet up with us and we'll hang out and, and have some drinks and stuff like that. And 
one of the reasons why I've been doing these live shows and trying to get out and do things is to have interesting things happen. Right. To have stories. So, you know, when you when you go to these places and you document what happens and, and who you run into and what goes down at the show, like that's an important element now to have stories to tell. You know, it was happening to me like it did with that person trying to get my life ruined. Right. That happened to me. Yeah. I didn't do anything to make that happen. So now I'm trying to actively do things to, to have, have things happen. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, isn't that part of being a personality and having a show is to live an interesting life? I, I watch these guys. I, I won't name any names, but there are certain people. And you were talking about the Scientology guy, uh, Aaron, right? You were saying he, he goes on stream four times a day. Yeah. I see guys like that, too. They're doing it for super chats. Right. So they're in their house and they're going on live two, three times a day. And that's all they're doing. So if I'm witnessing your life every day. You can't really tell me anything I don't already know. Right. You're not doing anything. Right. It's not interesting. Yeah. Well, I think Aaron's also tormenting the hell out of uh, Scientology. So his, well, his, you yeah. know, he's got some other things that he's doing to throw like a, you know, a, 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 a hammer in the machinery. So I didn't. Speak, mean, I didn't mean him. No, no. I, I understand per se because he has the but, life experience. But, it's fascinating. Well, but you're probably right because that those are probably the things he'll organize. Um, you know, he'll organize a whole protest yeah. and that gives him a whole, like that whole day he'll get arrested. That's a whole day yeah. of new, a new content. You know, I oh, they got arrested. This happened. Then he could talk about that for the next week and what his lawyer said well, and what. Speaking of that, do you guys know Chili DeCastro delete laws on YouTube? Tell me, you know, about Chili no, DeCastro. Don't, I don't know anybody. <laughs> I would think that this guy would, would maybe be on your radar. He just, he just got arrested. Well, he just got convicted. He's, he's going to serve, um, 180 days, I think. So this guy. It's not even worth unpacking. <laughs> Should I bring a toothbrush? I don't I, know. Guys, this is ridiculous. I can't even, I won't even get through a, a book series. It's a great response. So this guy was arrested for drug dealing. He was going to be a power ranger. He was cast as a, a power ranger. He was an actor out in LA. And then he, the story is, and, and I've done some research on him. The, the story is he was selling whatever the date rape drug is. Hmm. So not a good. Rohypnol. Yeah. I think I probably said it wrong. So not a good thing. Yeah. Right. Kind of a bad thing. And uh, he talks about this no knock raid that happened on his house that ruined his life. As if. <laughs> I was going to go that because you weren't selling drugs. Well, that's what's, that's what's so funny about it. <laughs> this like, just happened to me. He's just like, the, the police just arrested me. They, they can do it to you, too. It's like, no, they're not going to do it to me. I'm not selling the date rape drug. But OK, if you say so. So he's now on a crusade because he lost his opportunity to be a star in Hollywood. So now his entire YouTube channel is dedicated to fucking with police officers while they're trying to do their job. It's a bad idea. It's a very bad idea. Yeah. That's why he's in jail right now. But what he'll do, speaking of you know what we're talking about, he'll do some of those shows where he's just sitting there and he's interacting with the chat. But he'll do a lot of shows. He's in Vegas where he'll just go out and there's a car accident and the police come and he's just got his phone out and he's got oh, another yeah. camera here and he's just like, hey, pig, what are you going to do? Are you going to arrest these guys, you pig? And he's just like trying to stir shit up and get people. So obstruction was what he was yeah, charged so no, for. I'm going to arrest you. I'm going to place you in the back of my car and then I'll let you out later or maybe maybe tomorrow. But he claims to be a constitutional law scholar. L listen, I... I <laughs> I've interviewed several. I bet you have. I have. You know, and first of all, one, the interviews don't ever, they don't do well. But two, when you talk to the guys, it's just like, you know, well, this is what happened. I'm like, do you think maybe that was a bad idea? And then, yeah. then they'll go, they'll say, well, the, by law, they can't this. I'm like, yeah, I understand. But there's still like good taste. You were standing outside of an elementary school with a sign that says, um, you know, you're killing babies. Like. Yeah. It's an elementary school. Parents are dropping their kids off. Their kids are seeing this. They're driving by. Like yeah. just just because it is legal doesn't, doesn't mean you should do it. Right. You're looking right. for trouble. And so right. And they're well, they can't this. But they did. They did arrest you. They yeah. did throw you in jail. They did take you to trial. You right. did go to trial. You did lose. All right. And they can't do that. I understand. You know how many guys I've met that you know what a sovereign citizen is, right? Of course. You know how many sovereign citizens I've met that were in prison for for not paying taxes? And I'm like, right, but they have the guns and the prisons and the Correct. guards. And the whole time you're here for the next four years, you can tell everybody about how they can't keep you here and it's illegal, but you're going to do every 
every day of that time. Listen, your last name ain't Biden. <laughs> all right. You, you got to you pay want. your taxes. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it is fascinating to me. And we could get into all this, which we won't. Um, I, I do think that. Because I want to leave. No. I have a drive. Just because this is this <laughs> would go down a, a whole rat hole. Um, I, I do think that our freedoms are being taken away and that a lot of these guys are correct. That but there's this, a way to go system, about it. Correct. Standing outside screaming. Like, I don't mind the guys that are polite. The yes. guys, they walk in, they go, oh, I want to see your ID. I want this. And they're like, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't have to. I, I know I don't have to give you that. I'm not doing anything. I'm standing over here. Right. Like, like, that's the right way to do it. Correct. But when you're now I'm going to get into a you're confrontation. You're aggressive with right. the police officers. And what this guy sells. So his whole grift is he tells you anytime you're pulled over by a police officer, they might kill you. So this is why but his premise is, you know, going back to that thing where I said, you know, parents are afraid for their children because that's all they hear about is the bad incidents that happen. Right. It's like, no, 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 99.9999999% of people who get pulled over don't get murdered by the police officer. Yes, exactly. Okay. If you cooperate, you'll be fine. Right. Don't lunge at them. Don't reach for your gun. You'll probably be okay. Right. But this guy explains that you have to go through all this whole process or else the police are going to kill you. So he sells this card that you put up on your visor that tells you all the steps of what to do when you get pulled over by a police officer. And this is a guy who doesn't handle it well. I, I watched the videos of him getting pulled over because he's actually trying to get pulled over. Right. And then he treats the cop like an, an asshole. And it's like, why am I going to buy advice from this guy about how to deal with police officers? Right. I'm, I'm better at it than him. Right. And he probably gets arrested periodically. And, he does. Uh, yeah. And he also likes to march into the precinct and, you know, interview people. And they're just like, Sir, can you leave? No, it's my tax dollars. The patient, he thinks he's going to run work for, for governor. Me. You know, he's one of these assholes. So he's interesting to So on look federal, at. on federal probation, like I've been pulled over twice mm -hmm. and given a ticket once. Perfectly nice. You know, like the guy, they, they, you know, come up and, you know, I roll the window down. I don't roll it down this much. You go, no, you can hear me. You know, I roll right. it down. Hey, are you Mr. Cox? I'm like, yeah, do you need, you know, my license? Listen, I think the cop had already I show him my license. He just looked at me and I think he said, I, I don't think I even gave him my license. I know I didn't give him my registration. And I said, do you need my registration? Everything he said, and he goes, no, I already pulled it up. He said, look, you know, you were going this fast. That's a X amount of ticket. I'm going to give you a ticket for this. It's less. It's only $200. The other one's 400. You're going a little bit fast. Yeah. You know, reckless driving. I'm going to give you this, not paying attention to a road sign or something. That's only $200. He's like, I'm, you know, and he was so totally cool. That would have gone way different if I'd been an asshole. Of and course. I'm on federal probation. Of course. If, if he can fuck with anybody, he knows I'm on federal pr probation. As soon as he walks up, he could have walked up and been like, um, step out of the vehicle, or call yeah. somebody else. We're going to search your car because I, I can't not consent to a search. Mm -hmm. I'm on probation. I don't have the same rights you have. If they knock on my door right now and say, look, we want to search your whole car or your whole house right now for drugs. I'd be like, of course you do. Do you want me to sit on the couch or should I go stand on the curb? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Exactly. So. But yeah, um, I always say, because I've lost my driver's license. It's been a long time since right. then. I used to drive like an asshole. But I always say, you know how you drive when you don't have a driver's license? The speed limit. Yeah. Right. This this is not difficult to figure out. And I've been, one of the things we've been doing on the creep off lately is there's all these cop cam YouTube channels. And I used to love the show Cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took it off the air. George Floyd. I think it's back now, but used to love that show. Now that every police officer is being recorded and everything that they're doing is being recorded, I don't think it was always this way. Oh, they're no. very polite. They're, much they're very patient. Yes, yes. They are patient with the biggest assholes mm -hmm. that they should be arresting immediately for their behavior. And they put up with so much shit. Yeah, I'm amazed how how much they'll put up with sometimes. I mean, sometimes yeah. they're, they're complete dickheads. But, you know, periodically, you know, you've got some guy who's just a, a complete douchebag cop that you're like, that guy shouldn't even, he shouldn't be a police officer. He's too oh, aggressive. We just did a story. This police officer has been on the force for six months. He detains a guy, puts him in the jail. The guy's like, listen, I really got to use the bathroom. He's like, no, I'm not letting you use the bathroom. Guy ends up peeing in the cell. Right. Cop made him lick it up. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. He, that's a, to me, that's federal violation of my civil rights. Like of you've, course. You've, you, yeah. that cop, so there that are cops looking at first. There are still those time. types of cops. Yeah. That guy needs to do some time. He is. Um, <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. Um, so real quick, because you said something I wanted to mention earlier. You mentioned Hulk Hogan. Yes. Do you know who Bubba the Love Sponge is? Of course I do. Okay. You know B he's Bubba knows us. Oh, does he? Yeah, we've I reviewed his show before. 
<laughs> it's it's funny because because Bubba will be there's been a couple of times where Bubba's just like, and I bet who are these podcasts are going to watch this part of the show and they're going to blah 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 blah. You should go on it. Why didn't you go on a show? I should go on a show. I can, I, 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 I have, have a mutual his... friend in Alex Stein. Bro, I can give you his, I give you his information. Okay, yeah, I'll I reach out a, to I him. A, I have a seldom. He's he's in Tampa. I know he is. Yeah, I've been on his show several times. Okay, and we he so after I've been on it a couple times, he had invited me. He invited me back and he wanted me to be like one of the regulars. Oh, cool. And I was like, so we're having a conversation. We're trying to, I'm, we're working out. He's like, look, I'll pay you this much. I'll give you this much. You know, uh, we're going to start doing our our YouTube. If you can help with the YouTube, you know, so I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. So I thought it was pretty cool. And, you know, there's two doctors that sh- that do, is are they both lawyers? They're two lawyers. One's a doctor. There's two lawyers, brothers, two brothers. Okay. Um, They're the um Dr. Uh, Diago or something like that. The Diago brothers. So I think they're both attorneys, and one is uh, one is a, a an actual doctor, a, a plastic surgeon. So he and I get into it on the podcast a little bit, and and uh, so he tells Bubba after the whole show, um, I don't want that guy on the show anymore. Isn't that a good thing? You guys are. Going at it on no, the show? No, he didn't like... So here's the problem is that he mouthed off to me. And I think most guys, they kind of laugh it off. And I had only... I'd just been out of prison. Mm. Like I was mu- in a much more aggressive frame of mind. Gotcha. So when he pushed... Disrespected you, yeah. When he pushed back... Well, first of all, what he, what he said was, I was talking about a book that I had. I had written a book. And the guy I wrote the book about was upset about it and actually got it taken off of Amazon, which was shocking. And so I had gotten a lawyer. I'm going back and forth. And I'm like, and I can provide that, you know, this guy, we have a signed contract. We have this. So I'm explaining it. And the, he, the, it wasn't the doctor, by the way, it was his brother, the bro, the, the lawyer. He says, well, let's face it. When you're involved, we don't know if those, if that contract is real or not. Mm. And I was like, right. But I have all the documents. I have this. And he's like, yeah, but let's face it. You could face fake anything. So he starts in on this whole, and it's like, this is a, I'm in the middle of a lawsuit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm yeah, in the middle yeah, 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 yeah. Of, of like I get it. There's it's funny, <laughs> but it's not funny, right? And you know, so like like and I start. I go, yeah, but it, it is true. This he's like, yeah, but I mean, and I and I I just and I looked at it and I went, yeah, but it is true. And I said, I said it is true. And what he did wasn't right. I said, and, I, and so I start going boom, boom, boom. Like hey, like you're you're going over the fucking line. And he all of a sudden kind of like he's like, oh, he's like, no, I'm just saying. I'm just, and then he back he starts backpedaling. Show's over. Then after the show. I walk up to him and I say, Hey, listen, I said, I, I said, I, I said, I didn't mean to get aggressive. I said, but I said, you know, you understand I'm in the middle of a, a, a legal battle over this. Yeah. Okay. I said, there's a book that I spent a lot of time on and you're joking around. I said, I get it. It's a cutesy little thing. I said for, for on air, I said, but you're a lawyer and you're, you're making it sound like I could have manufactured documents, like which yeah, I didn't do. It's a credibility. Right. Exactly. Issue. I said, you're, you're questioning my credibility. Yeah. I said, I understand it's already in question. I said, but I didn't, I didn't make these documents. Yeah. This is the truth. I have proof of everything. I can't backdate documents that happened prior to, I said, me actually uh, uh, putting the book together. I said, so that's why I said that. And he said, um, he goes, well, we're just joking around. I looked at him. I said, you know what I think? He he it was just funny. I go, you know what I think's funny? And he goes, what? I said, what I think is funny is I said, your brother, right? Dr. Diago. And he goes, right. I said, I had a mortgage broker. I said, that you get when I said, you know, whatever, it was 15 years ago. I go, 15 years ago, my I had a female mortgage broker. I said that had gotten implants. She got Diago's because they called them, hey, I want a set of Diago's. I said, remember that you have a thing? It's you good got- branding. Right. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, she got a set of Diago's. I said, and I said, your brother, when he, he had just started about 15, 20 years ago, he'd only been doing about a year. So I said, so your father really built the business that he took over. And he was like, right. I said, your brother went in, didn't know what he was doing and burned straight through her breast, oh. through the tissue. I said, but instead of saying, I fucked up, let me stitch it up. Let's wait for your heel. I said, he went ahead and shoved the, the, I, the implant in. So total botched. Then he cut the other one and shoved that one in. I go, it was so badly botched. I said that the stitches came out and you could actually see the implant slipping out i go he then brought she then went back to him he then pushed it back and tried to restitch it and put i said put like you know butterfly tape on it i said that lasted about a day i said finally she i said finally she was so upset about it and because he was unwilling to correct it and kept trying to correct the botched surgery instead of taking it out and letting it heal she had to go to another plastic surgeon who had to correct your brother's 
botched boob job. I said, she then went to, I said, a lawyer that was a friend of my brother-in-law's. I said, and she sued your brother and he paid her $80,000. I said, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I, said, I said, I was going to bring that up. How funny that was that I'm now sitting with this guy who botched this tit job and that's had great. to pay 80 grand because he's such a fucking idiot. Yep. I said, but I didn't do that. I said, out of professional courtesy. Yeah. I, I said, you didn't give me that respect. Yeah. And I said, and that's why I'm upset. And I turned around and I walked off. And Bubba called me and said, this isn't going to work out. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. <laughs> and I was like, eh, I kind of thought. And I said, it's because of the Diago thing. And he's like, yeah. that, 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 definitely, that definitely is an issue. He, he basically, later, he, he told, he, later, or like a year or two later, he actually said to me, he told me, listen, he said, yeah, he said, absolutely no way. That guy and they probably sponsor out. the show, right? They do yeah. sponsor the show. They give Bubba a lot of money. They yep. basically run it. Of course. Yeah. But. So. It's a lot of fun. It w wouldn't have been a good fit for you anyway, it I sounds like. I think after that it was going to be <laughs> yeah. work. And I was at that time in my life. I, w I, mean, just, I was fresh out. Like I'm, I'm ready to – I was overly assertive is what I would say. Yeah. Well, you're also up against it. You, you it was get, a dick move. Yeah. I mean, I mean people are, are rooting against you. And you're there amongst friends trying to get something going. You got this asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Ex that's exactly. Exactly. So didn't work out. But I do have Bubba's phone number. I'll give it to you. He, okay. I bet you – He like I don't see him – other than that, I don't see him saying, no, I'm not interested. He'd come on just because he could fuck with you. You guys could go back. He's got a good sense of humor about it. Right. He yeah. would laugh about it. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know if you know who Alex Stein is. Uh, he works for Glenn Beck's company, but Alex Stein has been on Bubba and he reached out to me. He's like, Carl, you got to get Bubba on the show. And I definitely should connect yeah. with him. Um, I don't think him and Hulk are friends anymore, though. Him and Terry. No, he <laughs> I don't think he'll be at the uh, bar tonight. <laughs> so I connected Bubba with Danny Jones. Okay. Danny Jones runs the Danny Jones show. It used to be called Concrete. Okay. And he went on there and Bubba lays the whole thing out, you know, which makes Bubba seem like the victim. Of course. Like, you know, like I didn't really. I mean, there is a point where he explains a portion of the whole tape. I gave it to my guy and told him to get rid of it. He then took it and sold it. And, and that I'm pretty sure and all that came out. That is kind of the truth. But the yeah, I thought it got stolen out of his office. Or right. It got right? stolen yeah. by a guy that worked for him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like he gave it to him and said, get rid of it. And the guy stole it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that honestly, sounds weird, right? That's the part where it's like, it's like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just destroy it? You, or just, give you it can just destroy Hulk? it yourself. Yeah. Why even look at it? What, why not just destroy it? Why like, just you shoot it in the first place? Like, but. Right. Well, well, the way he says it was shot is that. And he, he explains the whole thing is that Hulk Hogan was going through his divorce mm -hmm. and he was staying. He was staying with Bubba. He's staying yeah. in their spare room. And he basically said, like, Bubba's leaving. He and his wife had an open relationship, which is super odd to me. And then Hulk was like, I'm so fucking stressed out. I need to get laid. And Bubba actually says, well, Jennifer's here. Yep. I'm leaving. You know, y'all should have at it. And she kind of looks at him and goes, huh, I don't care what the situation is. I don't care how friendly we are. I don't want Hulk Hogan fucking my girl. I can't follow that up. I'm not doing that. Either. I just, <laughs> yeah, over, like it's not going to happen. And so he takes her in the bedroom, bangs her. And then Bubba says, then later when I got back, I realized oh, we have inside cameras. I wonder if it got caught on camera. And he said, so I, I wonder it. if it's framed perfectly. On Look camera. At that. <laughs> what are the chances? Wow. There's three different shots now. <laughs> um, so, then of course he says he takes it, he watches it with his his basically manservant, and then he tells his assistant manservant like, "Hey, you know what? Get rid of that." And the guy steals it out of the, or basically runs off with it, or he says, "Put that away" or something. Mm -hmm. Get rid of it. He said, "I meant like put it away." And he took it and tried to sell it and ends up selling it. And that whole thing happens. Yeah. Didn't it put Gawker out of business? Was that the site that? Oh yeah. Ran yeah. with it and then. Well, and I don't. Terry think, sued the hell out of him. I don't know that Gawker ever ended up paying all the money because it was a ma so massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I bankrupt. do know that like they co they sued Cox Media, they sued like Warner Media, like they sued and they ended up paying an extra 60 oh, million third, and they did have to pay. Wow. So, you know, old uh, uh Hulk Hogan or Terry uh what's his name? Terry I forget what his last name is. They always say Terry Hogan, but that's not his real last yeah, name. Yeah, Terry some what I mean, he you know, that was a hell of a, that performance, which was not amazing. Made, um, made him a pretty good buck. Yeah. I mean, and it took, it took years. Better than yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good payday. Yeah. So, so we're going to uh, his place tonight. Have you been there before? 
Um, no, I know my buddy Danny has been there several okay. times. And Danny used to have um, Hulk. They have a, a guy on there. It, it's Hulk Hogan has a guy that used to be a wrestler, and he's got like long black hair. He's older now. Danny used to have him on all the time. Okay. And I've met him. Uh, but he, yeah, it's uh, Hogan's or whatever, right? It's, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I forget what the name of the place is, but it's pretty much like owned by him, but also a tribute to him, yeah. which I find hilarious. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think, I, I think maybe he probably hangs out there every once in a while, but I don't think he... Well, I, this is what I've heard. I don't know if this is true. He's not running the place. They have a, no, definitely not. <laughs> they, have a, they have a karaoke night, I think it's Tuesdays or something like right. that. And uh, there's strict rules about swearing. They'll kick you out if you swear on okay. karaoke night. So I guess he's still concerned about the little Hulkamaniacs out there. He still wants to make sure they're eating their vitamins and doing the right thing. So props to Terry for that. Um. Okay. You do you have any? Can you think of anything else? We. What do you? You know, I'll, I'll just say uh, I really appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, this has been a blast talking about this. I know this is a very different style show for you. Um, our website is whoarethese.com. Okay. And that's where you can find pretty much all the stuff that we're doing. The Creep Off is a separate website, thecreepoff.com. Okay. Uh, but you can find the shows that we do on there anywhere you get podcasts. I still like the audio format. We were talking about that before we started the show. Right. That this whole thing started because it's like, hey, I'm multitasking. I'm listening to a show while jogging or, you know, are, are you cleaning the house. Are you uploading the video too? Or you're still just uploading the audio? No. So, so we definitely have a video component now. Okay. Our, our YouTube channel has grown quite a bit. And I'm pretty much putting out a new YouTube video every single day. No, I meant I meant on Spotify. Like if you. Oh, I'm like, not doing video on Spotify, okay. just on YouTube. Okay. But actually, I, I feel like I need to get on Rumble. Are you on Rumble? Uh, the only reason we haven't, we've looked at it a few times, is that just like the as far as monetization is concerned, they're like everybody I know that's done it. They're like, it, it, if you do it, do it as a labor of love because really? you're just not going to make any money. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that it only works for like someone who's like huge and has millions of people and people are going to rumble specifically to search for them and watch their stuff specifically. Right. right. Won't be monetized anywhere else. Yeah. As opposed to someone found you on rumble. I'm doing a show tomorrow night with these guys called revenge of the sis. And they're a rumble show. They got kicked off of YouTube, but I think rumble reached out to them and paid. They have a deal with them directly. Oh, okay. So it's not like a rev share on advertising yeah, yeah. kind of thing, which yeah, I've seen the types of advertisers they get on Rumble. It's probably not I don't paying too understand well. understand why they don't just... To me, I why not just copy um, YouTube's format completely? Are you well, saying, like, what, what are they doing differently? Well, I mean, they're, they're, I don't think they're picking the, um, the AdSense, the people that go on your, uh, your... Like how their AdSense work, my understanding is it's different, yeah. right? Two, their algorithm isn't, is different. Like mm. you have to basically go... From what my understanding is, you have to, you have to search for me. You have to be like, you know, Matt Cox inside True Crime. You have to try and find me. And that their algorithm isn't really suggesting you the way YouTube's algorithm suggests. Yeah. Like, to me, it's Google's like... Google's been working. I mean, Google is the algorithm company. Right. And they've right. been working on this for over, you know, a couple decades now. So, yeah. Right. So they I mean, got you it would, down. You'd think, like, try and do, try and figure that out. Like, and and, and the, the, the money, like, pay these guys, like, good money. Well, it's hard to get the advertisers because you get the controversy. You know, who wants to be on Rumble when Alex Jones is on there? So then they have to be, you know, right, certain types like, of advertisers go on there. And also, I mean, well, I don't know. We haven't tried to upload or anything, but I mean, to me, I would have to, have, you'd have to have almost an identical upload system. Like, YouTube. right. You yeah. I don't want to, yeah, do a whole separate thing. But yeah, I, I'm thinking I, I probably want to get on Rumble only because it's the only place where there's, Free speech. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. You know, I mean, Spotify took down a lot of episodes. YouTube's. YouTube's, YouTube's brutal. Yeah. We're constantly... You, um, Colby uploaded four different versions of a show we had the other day. And I mean, every one of them was... It was, you know, the first ones, he just uploaded it. Limited monetization. Yep. The next one, he went through beep, 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 beep. And... Limited monetization. The next one, beep, 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 beep. I mean, just overwhelming. While we're reviewing, tr we're trying yeah, to get Yeah, all right, so you're putting it for the manual review. This yeah. is all uh, inside baseball stuff, but yeah. I have to do that all the time. And it almost always gets approved. It's like, guys, figure this the fuck out. Right, right. I, I do my videos the same. I have a video editor, and we take out the C words, and we take out the things that we need to take out. Right. So they're all the same video for all practical purposes. Right. And yet I get that shit all the time, and I constantly have to... Manual review. Well, and it takes forever. Yeah. It takes like, it's, it'll take it's four, supposed to be 24 days. hours, but it's yeah, it's never 20. I know. It is on a short. 
Like yeah. on a short, it's very quick. It can be. Yeah. It but, can be. I've had it happen where I click review and immediately it's approved. Like, right. Or sometimes you just change the title. You'll change the title and boom, it'll <laughs> yeah. be okay. But but yeah, most of the time it's it's limited monetization. We ask for a review. But in the meantime, he doesn't know that the review is going to come back. So he goes through and starts editing it himself and putting them up, hoping one yeah, will go through. Yeah, because if we're going to post in two days, it's like, yeah, you got to get wait. it. I can't wait three days. Let me right. do right. a couple of tests. And then everybody starts complaining that, you know, bro, what about, why'd you beep out uh, all these words? What about free speech? It's like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. I'm it's with YouTube. you. <laughs> yeah. There's no free speech on YouTube. Yeah. So, but okay. Yeah. All right. So thanks again for having me. This has been, uh, this has been a blast right. talking about this. And I'm definitely going to look into Sam. Wow. I'm going to send you, I will shoot you a Wes, Wes, Wa Wes Watson. Wes Watson. I'll shoot you Wes Watson's channel. Wes Watson. Yes. Got it. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Do me a favor. If you like the video, please share it to any friends and family. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Please consider joining my Patreon. We're definitely going to talk about, uh, I'm definitely going to talk to Colby about revamping it or doing something special and uh leave me a comment in the comment section i try and respond to as many comments as possible i really do appreciate it. we're also going to put uh all of uh carl's links in the description so you can just click on it go straight to his youtube check it out subscribe uh go to his spotify and any other links that he has he has a couple different podcasts so i really do appreciate you guys watching the video see ya